okay yeah we're just going straight in there laura because i've got my you just top just a moment ago you yeah. email me um or you whatsapp whatsapp me saying that that our most recent podcast that had ten thousand views mm. which is actually r really good and I think, so. I think i think it reflects um i i get messages and you get them i'm sure people saying you are my last bit the last voices of sanity you keep me sane mm. and i think that we are we, we provide a service to a lot of people out there who are just looking around and they thought i thought 2020 was getting pretty weird at the beginning but now i just i'm i'm at sea i cannot believe what is going on i mean you must be feeling it right now in london with tier four What's yeah that about? Well, though, I think because, no, I mean, it's bad. It, it's it's really bad. And I think um, we, we'd we already done sort of minimum Christmas, you know, n not because not because we're afraid of the virus, but because of the hassle factor. You know, normally my, my parents might have come over from Ireland, but, you know, months ago it was, you just, I think if you follow the papers and you follow the news like we do, you, you can feel the momentum. And although on the Wednesday, you know, Boris is like, no, no, it would be inhuman, inhuman to cancel Christmas. Even yeah, I yeah. was quite shocked then on Saturday when he's like, yeah, we're, we're going to cancel Christmas. Yeah, sorry. Sorry about that. Sorry about the fact that you've got massive turkey in your freezer that now you, you can't eat with just four people. Um, I mean, it, it, what he did on Saturday, and again, it would be easy for me to say, makes no difference to my life is it was so wrong and i mean I, I think i tweeted in that people will never forgive him for this if you're anti-lockdown like you and me you know he's completely we will never forgive him ever but even if you're sort of pro-lockdown i don't think you'll forgive the incompetence you know to to actually and i'd say how cruel can you be that on wednesday you say yeah it's fine it's definitely going ahead and then on Saturday to call to call a press conference at, at four o'clock and just say, you know, not even for, for if you're if you're in tier four, not even okay, you can have one day with one family, right? Which would have been an option, but to to say uh, not nothing to essentially issue a stay at home lockdown order is, I mean, it's just it is cruel, as he said in his own words, it is inhuman. But I I think a lot yeah. of it, as I said before, the, the cruelty is the point. And people get upset with me about that, like, oh, you know, I don't think they're doing it on purpose. And I don't think they're being mean on purpose. And I'm like, w why? I mean, you know, fool me once, shame on, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I mean, look at what they're doing. But I think the reality is, is too scary for people. The reality that there really might be malevolent forces behind this is, is actually too frightening. So that's why they- I tell you, Laura, I've I've experienced this recently. I, you probably didn't listen to my most recent podcast with with Toby. Yeah. But there has developed a rift between us because ah. Toby, in my view, is I mean we still get on and stuff. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, Toby, sure. in my view, is he's he's stuck in the old world, the world mm -hmm. that no longer exists. You know, he still wants to talk about about. Oh, I don't think that there's anything. There's, there's no conspiracy involved. I, I believe in cock up, and and it's just, it's just kind of misguided, incompetent ministers trying to cover their tracks, which was an argument would have which would have made sense early in the year. I mean, it would have been the most obvious conclusion rather than the idea that there was some kind of grand overarching conspiracy. The problem is that I think what a lot of people don't realise is that what we're experiencing now in in England, in the UK, is being experienced in Germany, is mm -hmm. being experienced in a lot of, I mean, particularly the the uh, the, the blue states in America and any, anywhere with, yeah. a, with a kind of uh, Democrat governor or whatever is, is, yeah. is subject to these crazy, California being the obvious example, you know, Gavin Newsom. Um, people living in France are, are having it, people living in Italy, in, in Germany. This is coordinated. And unfortunately, once you realise it's coordinated, mm. you then have to ask, well, why is it coordinated and what is the end goal? And when you reach the point where you realise that these that this, 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 this globalist movement is deliberately, deliberately trying to destroy 
small medium sized businesses mm. in order to to hand over the economic power total economic power to the big corporations to the big tech companies to amazon yeah. and so on people have a choice at that point they either go i don't want to know this is too too scary yeah. or they embrace the truth and start wondering how to take action before it gets we we get so completely uh, oppressed and under under the control of this of this new force that yeah. we won't be able we won't be in a position to resist now where are you at this stage well i mean i don't know even know if i've gone as far as it must be coordinated between the countries but i i definitely think um, I mean, I think Matt Hancock is dangerous. I, I could still think maybe yeah. Boris is just is just foolish and stupid, and he doesn't really know what is going on. Matt Hancock is he's a psychopath, you know. I mean, yeah. he was on. Yes. So I'm yes. going to get a bit more religious and talk about dark forces and things. There's a few things. So Matt Hancock is, is on your TV on Sundays again. I don't. I only watched the clip, and he's basically saying people act like you're sick, assume you're ill. I mean, this is essentially Munchausen disease by proxy on the entire population. You know, to have a government minister out there labeling people as sick, as, you know, disease spreaders, wear a mask, that itself is, is, is sick. He, he is a psychopath. And then the other issues of cruelty, again, I mean, this is completely narcissistic behavior in that, again, three days Three, on the Wednesday, they say to people, everything is fine. So everybody stays calm. They'll travel at the weekend. And then they obviously cancel everything and people flee London like refugees. OK, so you're now a refugee yes. or an internally displaced person in London in St. Pancras. And the neck of Matt Hancock having caused that to turn around and say, oh, they're, they're, it's just, they're so irresponsible. This is seriously, this is abusive husband stuff. You know, they act incredibly cruelly. You, you, they push the wife to do to, to the limit. Then she does something, and it's like, you're so irresponsible. This is mind games. This is this is gaslighting. It, the, the, the. I mean, he, the man, is sick. He is dangerous. He's causing mental illness. I, I think uh, across, you know, in the thousands. Um, yeah. He wants to push people to despair. And this is what sociopaths do. They act completely unreasonably, but they somehow make it seem that you are the problem. So staying on the yeah, same yeah. pancreas thing, and you know all the polling, of course, of course, is for tier four. Huge support for I it, know. close to 70%. But I said, and I said this on Twitter, I said, I reckon if you commissioned a poll and said, um, the army should go into St. Pancras and shoot some of the shoot those people who are leaving. You would get at least 20 to 30 people percent saying, yeah, had to be done. It's a mutant virus. You know, people like to think they're decent people. No, 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 no. It, it, it's very shallow. If they think they're at risk, my safety is at risk from these disease spreading, vi you know, people from London. Sure, shoot them. I mean, you know, I could get COVID here. I, 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 no, you wouldn't get anyone to, I, I ran that poll, I mean, I don't know if people were joking on Twitter, 83% of people said, yeah, sh yeah, the army should go in, 83%, yeah, yeah. now I don't know if they were joking, obviously, but yeah, so that's the first thing, and then the other thing is the chaotic nature of everything, you know, so again, you have people fleeing, going to St. Pancras, and, um, oh, I was in my Waitrose today, I'll admit it, oh, the Stilton and the Champagne have sold, all, uh, sold out online, by the way. I'm sorry, viewers. So that's more bad news. Anyway, the queue, I mean, I was just picking up something, was, uh, I mean, it, insane. So these, so they, so Boris goes and makes the, uh, creates internally displaced people within the country. Then he says we're essentially a plague island and it's surprised that the French have decided to close the port. And I'm not going to blame the French. I don't care. Maybe they're playing politics. Maybe they aren't. You clown country. You must have known this would happen. And now there's thousands of lorry drivers down there sleeping in their cabs with hardly any food. So, do, you know, what, what this is, is a sense of chaos. And uh, the, the, the dark forces, that's what they like, is chaos. So, yeah. you know, uh, 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 God, I would say, so they uh, likes order. And if you're a conservative, you like order. Okay, you know where you are. Can you take the dog out? You know where you are. Um, and you, you know, you can plan ahead. You've got things to look forward to. 
I'm going to get on my train at four o'clock and I'm going to go and see my parents and it's going to be very civilized. No, dark force is like, like, like the chaos, like the anxiety, like the stress. And that's exactly what we've seen in the last four to five days. And it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a psychological attack, uh, arguably, on the population, perhaps probably to pre- prepare them for even even worse measures. And it will certainly go tier four pretty much across the whole country. They essentially oh. And you've already seen um, Pretty Patel. Yeah. Who I sort of, I like, but she's not, she's not very bright. She's, she's, I mean, she's been putting out these tweets saying that, yes. threatening to escalate, escalate. I mean, look, she's the Home Secretary. Yeah. She's in charge of the police. Yeah. She's in charge of this two tier system whereby if you're out for Extinction Rebellion or Black Lives Matter, you get a free pass. But if you're yeah. protesting against the most fascistic government policy in 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 our history, well, certainly since since the Commonwealth, yeah. then you are going to get arrested and, and beaten up. I was also thinking about, I mean, for all this to be possible, Mm. This is this has got to have been a long time in the making. And, you know, I, b- before in, in podcasts before we've talked about in a kind of isn't it curious way, the fact that c- your your website, Conservative Woman, is pretty much the only the only website talking about well that that believes that the don the, the the presidential election was stolen from Donald Trump, which it which it was. I mean, there's there's copious evidence for it. It's not a question of of whether it was stolen. It's it, it's merely a question of will the courts agree to hear this? Yes. Now, I found this I found this puzz- puzzling. I thought that this was just Trump derangement syndrome. But I think it's more coordinated than that. I think that right. the I think that the mainstream media and unfortunately the badly compromised alternative media. I mean, look at Guido Fawkes. Guido Fawkes is not is not has given up doing his job. He's just a kind yeah, of government it, it, mouthpiece. Yeah, you know, he he but, poses as this kind of oh crazy, crazy, edgy critic of yeah, yeah, yeah. he's not. He's part of the establishment. But I think that the media has been at war with Trump because it recognizes that he, well, he sees that the mainstream media has failed. It hasn't been doing its job for a long time and he's called it out. He's he's constantly talking about the, you know, the, uh, the failed stream media and so on. And, yeah. and he's absolutely right. So there's no love lost between them. But I think that this, this uh, globalist takeover, because what that's what it is, is it depends in part on on the a, a media effectively brainwashing the public into think, thinking that this pandemic is real, um, that Trump is 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 bad and and that he lost. And I don't know. I don't like ever showing showing like wavering in the face of the enemy. I think it's really really important that we 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 gather our strength and and our courage. Yeah, but. I mean, it's quite tough right now, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it, it, you know, I mean, it's very tough. I mean, it's very tough. And I, I mean, the media have just been essentially a mouthpiece for the government, and that they are yeah. they are a scandal. Like I read, so I didn't read my Sunday Times until the very late at night. Again, I read it so you don't have to. And I just took, yeah. but I took an overview of it, and I, I just at the end of it, I just I sat back and I said. You know, this is the biggest thing that's happened since, again, I, I don't know, he's, he's essentially he's trashed the plans for, for millions of people. And the, the, from the opinion pieces to the news was just like, oh, well, you know, the worst thing was, again, the, the opposition comes from either he's not, these are their three lines, he's not strict enough, he's not locked down strict enough, the compensation, the money isn't big enough, and, yeah. uh, and he's incompetent. That, that's the opposition line. It's never, this is a scam. Let's look at the PCR tests. Why are they mass testing? How bad really is it? What's the fatality rate? Um, what, on what basis are they admitting people? I mean, it's just, it's just a scandal to have a media so, so poor. I mean, one of the opinion pieces was a bit like, yeah, I mean, it's just, this is her phrase. It's going to be a freaky Christmas. You know, but don't get too upset. Yes, I... don't, don't be so upset about it, lads. You know, you're just like, 
Yeah, I, I just, it, but it, 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 when, when the scrutiny is that poor, you do begin to think, is it actually, is it actually coordinated? Because there's loads of lines they could take. Loads, right? Even if they're still, again, generally for the measures. What is happening with these PCR tests? What is happening with the COVID passport thing? Which, which the fact that they put a contract out for that had to, was broken on Twitter. You know, I mean, this is who who is making the money? Someone is making a lot of money from this, right? But you never, it's hardly ever covered in the papers. And you're ju you're just like, this is just all they do is push the government line, prepare everybody for ever stricter measures. Um, and then just and then give out a little bit about the incompetence and then they just move on. You know, yes, I, mean, I agree. It's, it's, this, it's ridiculous. But I'll for, go on. For, sorry, for, for, for any 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 halfway decent journalist. Yeah. This would have been the year that offered the richest pickings yeah. any journalist has ever had the joy of, of being able to, to grab hold of. I yeah. mean, you think about it, there's the there's the massive scandal of of the government's uh, extremely corrupt ex spending on, on, on PPE. There's yeah. the fact that a lot of a lot of um, cheap, ready, readily available cures for coronavirus yeah. were were actually not really you, you weren't really banned from talking about them on on social media by by the big tech companies. Yeah. But governments actually intervene to stop these hydroxychloroquine being the obvious one in, in, in France, actually on the say so of the World Health Organization, where you think the word health and its name might might um, encourage it to look after people's health. But no, the World Health Organization effectively banned the use of the most effective cure against coronavirus. Why? Well, then you got onto the vaccines. This, there should be stories every single day about yeah. the about the the side effects of the vaccines, about anaphylaxis, about about yeah. the the dangers of rush vaccines, about the dangers of RNA RNA based vaccines. Yeah. Uh, th there should be pieces every day about the Great Reset. I haven't yeah. seen a single one anywhere in the media about the, yeah, about yeah. the Great Reset. It's like and and it's a bit like um, it's a bit like the Eloy and the Morlocks in in War of the Worlds. It, it, it seems to me that we've got a a Morlock class at the top, it, it, comprising people like Bill Gates and comprising the, um, the, the, the 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 sort of the players in the World Health Organization and so on. And these are just feeding on the flesh of these innocent airy fairy dupes, writing pieces like, "Ooh." Isn't Christmas, as you say, yeah. isn't Christmas going to be a bit wacky yeah. this year? The, the, the BBC, I just saw on Twitter, have an article, how to enjoy Christmas on your own. How to have a fun Christmas on your own. You know, what's wrong yeah. with you? Like, what, well, you're, you, you're the BBC. This is, this is journalism, it is. I mean, it, it, no, it's scandalous. Yeah. But in terms of, because I did see a comment on, on, I mean, but the fact that they're essentially in lockstep does, does raise, uh, certainly has alarm bells ringing for me. But I did see one of the comments below was yeah. like, was like um, well, I mean, these podcasts are good, but it's really covering old ground now. What are, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? So the only solution, I mean, what has to happen, James, I, uh, this is all I can think of, is I, and I think involves Lord Sumption. Basically, all of the anti-lockdown Conservative MPs have to resign. OK, I don't want to hear them tweeting about how sad they are. Right. You saw that as well. They're yes. really sad. I don't want people. Steve Baker telling me that he's tried yeah. every option, but regrettably he's no, I don't want your life. I don't want your emotions. They did vote against. I think they did vote against it the last time, but they actually need to resign from the party and you need someone completely above reproach and that hasn't been involved in Brexit and isn't tainted by any of that. Somebody like someone incredibly articulate and respected like Lord Sumption, and they set up their own, you know, anti-lockdown party and the the only the only aim is to um is to yes yeah, stop these lockdowns and vote against these lockdowns that's all i can think of because the mps i mean they, they're the ones with the power still they have a little bit of power you know they're the ones with the vote yeah. and because the mainstream media is so um poor at the moment you're not going to get a groundswell of public opinion necessarily changing yes i mean they've extended the furlough until april so their plans are clear and the, I mean, so the other thing about this tier four, which is essentially a lockdown, because remember the previous time Matt Hancock was like, look, please, can we get this second lockdown? Because you'll get another vote 
on any further lockdowns, you know, just 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 vote for no, this. No. And then uh, because they have this has been done by statutory instruments. Right. It hasn't even like it hasn't even had a vote by parliament. I mean, it's a, it is a scandal. And um, it's been done by statutory instrument and they can do all of this. They can call it a tier five and they won't need another vote. So, I mean, I'm wondering uh, yeah. what more will it take for Graham Brady and the rest of them to to because they're just being taken by fools. I mean, tactically. The thing is. It, yeah. The thing is, Laura, that that until they accept mm. what is going on. Yeah, they are never going to they are never going to summon up the radical will to do yeah. what is necessary to do. They're still acting as though, yes, well, uh, I, I suppose if the Sage Commission tells us this, then yeah. we should do blah, 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 rather than going. The Sage Committee is run by communists. They yeah. are on, they're completely on board with this this global takeover. We can other countries may allow themselves to be to be suborned in this way, but we're the United Kingdom. We we had an empire. We're great. We're not going to do this to our people. It's really as simple as that. Yeah. And so long as you've got people like like Guido Fawkes, you know, this kind of controlled opposition writing yeah. pieces like I think James Dellingpole has completely lost the plot. He's he's tin for hat merely for doing the job of pointing out that that there is copious evidence that the US presidential election was stolen. It's it's just not good enough. It's it's like something out of in fact what it is and we've mentioned this before. This is this is gaslighting. This is the kind of thing that goes on in totalitarian states like like the Soviet Union. The Soviet yeah. Union, if you were saying if you were saying things that were inconvenient to the to the hegemony, then either you were shot in the back of the head or yeah. you were exiled to the gulag or you were put in a, in a mental hospital. You were and we've seen this already happening yeah. to, for example, scientists in France or Germany who've been critical of, of, of this, of the, of the, the, the COVID agenda. Yeah. And have been put away in loony bins. And this yeah. is what they want to do to me is what they want to do, do to you as well. And it's why we offer such a resource to all those people. I, you know, I'll, I'll bet that this will get more than 10,000 next time. You know, it, people people need to know what's going on and, and, and they're not getting it from the media. Yeah, no, I know. I mean, it, it is a massive transfer of wealth. And they just from from, as you say, they're designed to destroy middle and working class communities, particularly the middle class, I'm afraid, because they they are, you know, they're the ones that produce most of the wealth. And um, it's yeah, it is it is completely controlled opposition. As you say, they spend more time attacking people who seem a little bit on the, you know, you're a little bit too extreme for us than they do, you know, looking at the government agenda or they'll attack some obscure Labour MP somewhere who once wrote an article, um, you know, 15 years ago that was a little bit fruity. You know, like we're past that stage. You know, I don't I don't care about those yeah. people. The, the, the threat is in Downing Street right now. And you get a lot of this. Oh, the French. How do oh, the French. So now, you know, how dare the French close their, Give me a break. The French aren't the problem. You yes. know. They are not yeah, the problem. Yes. Oh, how dare they close the port? You were the one that called us a plague island. Why don't Why don't you criticise? Why? I mean, loads of them are completely bought and sold. They would defend Boris over anything. It's It's just It's just pathetic. No, and we and I think a lot of it also is denial. And we can talk about. Um, I don't know. You know, some of the viewers may or may not have seen your friend Toby Young, who who had an article in the Spectator. You know, saying my poor friend James, he's gone. <laughs> He's yeah. gone to the dark side. And I, I texted you, you know, because he had a, he had a very um, interesting piece where he said, but James isn't able to tell me, like, to what end? You know, what, what, to what end is this, great, is, is this great reset other than enslavement? And I'm like, yeah, what enslavement isn't enough? I mean, I, I think, I, you know, it's, I don't want to be enslaved. True. Yeah, they just want you to be it's sort true. of drones. If we could just be drones and, and just sort of get through on the Netflix and, 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 and stuff like that, then they're happy. But they don't want, um, they don't want uh, any, that's, I know that's the Daily Mail actually, but they don't want any, um, uh, uh, yeah, they don't want any serious, you know, pushback. They don't want anybody to be too, too difficult to handle. It's, 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 it's disgraceful. Yeah, 
it is it is uh that that whole that whole controls control opposition thing whereby they you know douglas douglas murray is a hero toby young is a hero that, that they do so much and i i give them as examples precisely because they are so heroic yeah and yet they yeah. have they they have not gone that extra mile they have not that they don't want to go there no. because they recognize that in order to have their 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 mainstream media careers they have to they have to toe the line in the same way that talk radio um hosts do you know talk radio is pretty good yeah, but yeah, yeah. they've still got their their producer whispering their ear saying uh so there. Do, do point out, won't you, that James Dellingpole is not representative and do do mention that there are other points of view, because otherwise our, our listeners might imagine that yeah. this crackpot was um, yeah. had a handle on the truth. But I, I do, find it really boring I do to, think to, 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 are, to be this play yeah. this role. I, I look, I do think people are genuinely, they just, it, it's too frightening to think there could be, like, that this could be serious. That we're not talking about a little bit of a lockdown here until Easter, but we're we're talking about you know, a, a serious transfer of wealth, um, a significant like or and or perhaps total loss of 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 uh, of freedoms. You know, un until somebody and some until somebody mans up and does something about it. You know, I mean, the level of restriction now is is that you basically can't do anything other than just consume and sort of stay in the house. Go on. So, and and uh, I, I was reminded actually that this is. You know the, the the great reset. It somebody pointed out is not is not um 1984. It's 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 brave new world. That's the the technocratic cult. And of yeah. course, what they're giving us right now is is soma. We still get and yeah. Netflix works fine. Uh, we can still go to Waitrose and get our champagne more or less. You know, um, we can yeah. still all our all those comfy huga things that that we've 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 been brainwashed into into thinking are, are constitute a lived life yeah. they're all fine the, we, we are we're a bit like sort of kobe beef cattle we're being fed on fed on beer and we're yeah. given massages every day meanwhile what we don't realize is that we're in this pen and we're being yeah. fattened for the slaughter and that's it and that yeah. and, and that's happening uh, it's the economic you. illiteracy of, yeah. of, of 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 people that do they not understand that when Rishi says now he's going to extend the furlough into what into into spring? Do they not ask themselves, well, hang on a second, where is this money going to yeah. come from? Given it's that the productive sector now. of the economy, it's the private more, sector. Yeah, it's more than two trillion now. I think the public the public data was announced today. Like it's 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 just crazy. Like the, the the levels what they are doing is. I mean, it is evil. They are destroying the country economically. They're destroying it socially. They're destroying your civil liberties. They're destroying your way of life. And people say, oh, it's only money. No, this is people's ability to work. You know, this is people's ability to run their business. You know, I mean, as I've said, as I've said before. And, and to have autonomy over their lives. Yeah. To have self-esteem, to do what they're meant to do, yeah. which is to look after their families, give them a better life. This is all being taken away. In in a, in the space of what eighteen months, we're going to be put on a lot of these people are going to be put on this universal basic income. Everyone's yeah. going to be in hock to the government, dependent on the government. Yeah. And then it's game over. How do we? How well, do I, we? I, how do we come back from that? Yeah, I mean, I said. To, I mean, you are right that it is very much like Brave New World. But I did. I watched. I watched nineteen eighty four the other night. I've, I've of course read the book a few times, but the the oldish version. There's an old film version of it on Prime, and. Um, Obviously, it looks quite different because actually they are all very poor and everything very, um, you know, everybody's wearing the same clothes and obviously he's changing the headlines, which pretty much sometimes happens here. Uh, you know, we'll put James Dellingpole down the memory hole. You'll be an unperson soon. Um, but I, you know, I didn't. So the, obviously, I, I already am. Yeah. So there's obviously all the tellies and the screens and they're everywhere. You can't get a minute's peace. And I did think. I mean, that really is what we have now. You know, you've got your Good Morning Britain and your Sky and they're just pumping this propaganda all the time. So then we're at war with, you know, in 1984, you're at war with Eurasia. But now we're at war with the virus. 
and it never ends. Yeah. And oh, we won against Eurasia, yeah. but now these other guys are fighting. Oh, but we almost beat the first COVID virus, but it's mutated. Sorry. So the war continues. I'm like, I, as I say, I, you know, I sometimes say, I'm like, this in a way, you got to hand it to them. I mean, it's just genius to choose a virus. First of all, you can't see it. It's everywhere and ev it makes everybody the enemy. You know, everybody's unclean and then it can change, right? You know, so you need stricter, you need stricter enforcement. Oh, there's a mutant virus. And I have to say that mutant yeah. virus, James, I mean, it really did come along in the nick of time to cancel Christmas, right? Funny. I mean, it was- Just it was, in time for Christmas. Yeah. It's a Christmas miracle. No, look, I mean, it probably did mutate because that, well, that's what bad colds do all the time. And that's all that this is. And, and actually, when they mutate, they get less severe, don't they? Because if you're a virus, you want to stay alive. And the best thing to do is actually be mild, right? Because you can infect more people. And you don't, but whereas if you're, if you're the Black Death and you infect someone and they drop dead in 30 minutes, then that's the end for you, Mr. Virus. So the, the, the ones that, you know that about viruses, right? They mutate until they're less severe because then they can spread more easily, right? Because they, you're carrying it. Pass the bells on. Oh, we've lost. You're back. Laura and I are just going to, because that last section of the podcast, the, the, the rump of it, ended rather abruptly. <laughs> and I didn't want you to think that we've been got yeah. by MI5 yet. Yeah. Obviously, that, that will probably come at some, some stage. But yeah. um, for the moment, we still have a semblance of free speech. And I just wanted to say also, sorry for the really terrible like reception and I don't, uh, is it yours or mine, Laura? It's not mine. I refuse to believe it's mine. It could. Well, OK, well, well, it, it, it could be mine. And I, I apologise. And I don't know what to do about that because I live in the country. And as you can see behind me, I, I haven't even country. I haven't even bothered. I haven't even bothered to put the lights on, even though I, I know I'm sort of mired in gloom here now. But, you you know, you can see you can see the England that, that Laura and I are fighting for we don't want to we don't want to lose we don't want the new normal we want our world back the normal world we want western civilization back yes Wouldn't you agree yes well that's tolkien's england i think you've got there behind you i'm waiting for a hobbit to yeah. to just run past your window i've got lots of sheep lots oh, okay. and lots of sheep okay and um Fair By enough. the way, did you see uh, this? Was, this is quite amusing. Is that since we since we last spoke, you know, so so I mentioned that Guido had tried to ridicule me and saying that James Danny Pole's completely lost it, and yeah. because he's he he thinks <laughs> he thinks the idiot that Trump won the election and that it was stolen by Biden. I mean, what a fool! What yeah. a fool! And interestingly, he's he's got ratioed, if you know what that means, oh, I by don't. his by his fan base. They've all. Yeah, they said, yeah, I, I like, you know, we, 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 yeah. we, yeah, you've turned into the Guardian. I, I've heard, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can understand, I can imagine that. Yeah, because his fan base is arguably quite hardcore. So, um, yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. But I don't, I, I, I probably like you, I don't want to be the, the, the pivot point of, of, of the revolution. I don't want to be, um, you know, I don't want to be, well, I certainly don't want to be Trotsky. I don't want to be, um, you know, I don't want to be leading the revolution. It's, but it, it, it just seems to me that people are, people are ducking their responsibilities. And yeah. that can't be good. Well, I mean, you know, the, you know, the, the, the quiet tyranny, life. tyranny, all it requires is, is people not to fight. No, I know, I know. No, it's, it, it's been, it's been disappointing. I think unless until it becomes sort of personal, very personal and um uh, i don't know what it would uh, i don't know what it would take for for people really to to start saying actually we don't agree with this lockdown but you know they're frightening people with this you know mutant virus but that's the general public but as for people you know yeah on the right in um in in our world yeah they they need to they need to man up they i, I don't know what's taking them so long it's ridiculous the thing is the thing is that people with people with the small businesses which are about to be destroyed if they haven't been destroyed already yeah what they may not be aware of while they're cowering at their homes with their masks and 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 believing the government propaganda 
is yeah. the point will come where they have no business. They have no source of income other than the government's handouts. Yeah. And what are they going to do then? I mean, the, one of the reasons that I always, I'm very conscious of money, is that one badly needs what's known as fuck off money. You need you need money to enable you to do, to give you the security to do what you need to do. Yeah. The, the, you you can't you can't you can't fight the revolution from a from a monastery on a on a diet of of bread and water. You well, you kind do. of need. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But you need you need a degree of security. How do people think if if they they're not willing to fight now? How how ha much harder do they think it's going to be in six months' time when? Yeah. Unless unless they behave themselves, they won't get any money from the government. How does that work? Well, I think people need to wise up. Yeah, I think the government will keep paying them until you know something really substantial money happens. Runs out. In, yeah, yeah, the, the money runs out, or the international markets say we're not buying the debt anymore, or whatever it might be. So as long as the gravy train keeps going, um, you know they will keep going. But as I said, um, you know I was going I was going through a local a local town near me. And this is just after the restaurants had closed and everything. And, you know, they had all made such an effort in terms of their Christmas decorations and inviting people in. And I really do think preventing people from working, it's a form of humiliation. You know, it's a form of how can we humiliate you by, you know, locking you out of your own your own small business, your own restaurant. Um, and it, it'll either be, you know, they'll only be able to buy them off for so long, I think, until they become really miserable and say, actually, you, you cannot stop me from working. It, 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 it is, a, as I said, it, it's a form of inhumane and degrading treatment. Um, and um, it, I'm not doing it anymore. The, I, I'm glad you you made that point because that was the final one I I I'd, I'd meant to make in the in the earlier section and didn't, which is that yeah. um, I know somebody whose whose husband supplies the restaurant industry with everything from cooking equipment to to wholesale you know booze and and, and food and stuff. Yeah, and she was telling me it's awful. These yeah. businesses have ordered all their food, yeah. all yeah. their drink up for Christmas, ready, ready for their for, for their anticipated desperate market, desperate for some entertainment after after a year of lockdown. Yeah. And they and this was going to be a massive money spinner for them. And then suddenly, just like that, in yeah. order to in in order to 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 um, cover up from his his cock ups with Brexit or, or yeah. whatever nefarious um reasons you want to attribute to him um boris has just gone and snatched that away from them i i can't imagine how my, how it must feel uh, to be I in must, the hospitality industry right now i mean it must be devastating but as again you know the chaos and and the cruelty that is that's an added that is probably the point for them um and um it it, it i mean it, the thing is they're, they're not going to allow them open for at least another two or three months and then they might let them open for a short time and then they'll just close them down again you know it i mean it's 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 they're already saying you know they're already saying easter and that's the thing not only did they put everybody in tier four they also managed to drop in like literally 24 hours later oh yeah and this will be until easter by the way not not till two weeks this is this is you, you know get used to it um because of this yes and, yeah oh, oh you're right yeah, yeah, and then You're it's right, going right. to be prepping. P. It's going to prep. They're going to prep the rest of the country for tier four, and then they'll probably shut the secondary schools as well for for good measure. You know, it's um. Well, Laura, it's terrible. I think we we should we should just wish all our listeners and and and, and by the way, thank you for all. I'm really I, I'm really chuffed and 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 touched that yeah. so many people have really latched onto our show because yeah. we never planned to do a regular no, thing. No. No. But it's because we're genuine. like it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's because you're genuine and you're, you know, we're not we're not towing anybody's line, and we certainly haven't been we haven't been bought. So you're getting you're getting the real deal. And um, you know, again, you wish you could do more, but people need to wake up. It could, it, it, look, it, it is it is very very serious. You're, uh, people, it's serious, and it's it is an overarching. You know, I don't know how, if they really they haven't sat down in a darkened room, but it's an overarching plan here to um, 
really crush the, the spirit, I think. And, you know, people's ability to work in, in Western civilization, it's, it's, a, it's a scandal. And, and, you know, but people have gone along with it for so long and they've been frightened, truly terrified. And now with this extra mutant strain that um, they, uh, they're getting away with it so far. You know, it's it's sad. It is sad. They are getting away with it. Yeah, they are because. Well, I think all that remains, Laura, is for yes. us to wish all our, our viewers and listeners a very happy Christmas. Yes, indeed. And a happy indeed. and a better year than than this one. Well, yeah, good. no, I think a more. A, a well, year... after Christmas and, and have a good time with with your family. Yeah. We need a career of cur- our year of courage. That's what we need. People need to to, to start being courageous. That's okay. What we need. Okay. Have a great Merry Christmas. Christmas. Bye. Bye. Bye bye.